Hey everyone and welcome back. So now that the big secret is out in the open, I thought I would take some time to properly introduce you to my new ride, the Honda Trail 125. Now on that last video, if you watched it, you might be scratching your head thinking, why on earth did I go out and buy a small 125cc trail bike slash scooter? But I did reveal in that video that part of the motivation for buying this was that I use my scooter a lot to commute and just to get around and it was starting to show some signs of its age. Now it was still working perfectly fine, it was just starting to become a little bit unreliable to me. So I decided about six months ago that I was going to start looking for a replacement for the scooter and you know I started off by scouring Facebook marketplace and Craigslist and things like that and then I started kind of looking at replacement scooters but then I landed on the Honda mini bikes. So specifically the Monkey, the Grom, uh, and the Honda Trail 125. And pretty quickly I narrowed it down to the 125 just because, well, I wanted something that was still essentially a scooter that I could use as a commuter and have a lot of storage on, like you see here with the crate. Um, but also something that I could take on trails that is super light and super nimble that I'm not going to feel overwhelmed like on the Himalayan if I get into some really rough stuff I can just quickly turn around or just plow through it because it's so small it's essentially a mountain bike right so that was the other big draw for me um, and then of course as I mentioned in the previous video the nostalgia I mean I used to ride a bike that looked just like this when I was 12 years old at my grandma's place and I fell in love with it then and I remember thinking someday I'm gonna get a bike just like this but I mean it just really wasn't a good time in my life where I had disposable income to be like I'm gonna go out and buy a Trail 90 or a Trail 125 and I, I saw that these bikes came out uh, a couple years ago they were re-released and obviously there's a few things that are different about this release as compared to the older models but um, I made the decision pretty quickly that I wanted to try and purchase one. Uh, unfortunately, as many of you watching this probably know, they're really, really hard to get. So the long story short there, for those of you that are also trying to maybe get one of these bikes, and as cliche as it sounds, but persistence and patience, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. And probably a little bit of luck too. Um, I, I went to the dealership here in town and you know, there's really only one dealership in town that sells Honda and they basically laughed at me and said they weren't even taking deposits and I, I essentially gave up on it for several months and then at some point in mid-March I started phoning around, you know, I, I just happened to be looking around and I saw one showing up on a, on a dealership's website down in Phoenix and of course I called them and they said, oh yeah, that sold, you know, a week ago, uh, pretty much as soon as we listed it. And so I was about ready to hang up and the guy said, actually though, we've got three supposedly coming in according to our Honda rep and the first two are spoken for, but the third one is not. Now, obviously buying from a dealership, especially in Arizona, you pay a lot for the prep fees and document fees and it's really, it's really kind of a scam, uh, but there's no way around it if you're gonna buy at a dealership. They all do it and it's kind of just like, you gotta kind of just swallow that with the rest of it. So. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't too bad. I didn't pay too much over MSRP um, when it was all said and done. And so I'm, I'm happy with the price I paid. And it is a 2022, so it's brand new. Nothing is different about the 22 as compared to the 21 as far as I know. Uh, it's exactly the same bike, but it is a 22, brand new. Um, and uh, I am thrilled. I've got about 90 miles on it and I still have a half a tank of gas, so that should give you some idea what the gas mileage on this thing is, it's unbelievable. Now, obviously I've been nursing it and, and riding it really gently because it's in the break-in period, but I am just flabbergasted that this thing's gonna get well over probably 140 to 150 miles on a tank. So pretty remarkable when you think about it. Now, there's a few things that I can say that are definitely different. Um, the Trail 90 that I rode 25 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it was, um, it had a spare fuel canister. This does not come with that little canteen canister, that kind of quintessential Trail 90 spare fuel canister, which is a bit of a bummer, but thankfully there's a lot of ways to carry spare fuel on this. Um, the other thing, and I think that one of the things that's kind of a big bummer about the new release is that it doesn't have a high-low gear switching like the old Trail 90s did, which you know comes in real handy when doing stuff like this 
when you're doing some steep stuff. Um, you know, it's just kind of what it is. It, they don't have an option for it. If they would have, I would have gotten it, but uh, this is the only model they have. And they, also the only color you can get in the States is the red. I really like that sort of camo, khaki color that you, you see in videos from you know New Zealand, Australia, places like that. But in the United States, the only color you can get is the red. So this is the new bike. I don't have a name for her yet. Uh, I'm thinking I might I might name it uh, after something related to to my childhood memories. Maybe I'll name it after my grandma or something <laughs> because that's where I used to ride the bikes. I don't know. Does she look like a Louise? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we'll go with Louise. My grandma's somewhere up there right now smiling down on us. Um, so I'll tell you a few things about Louise. Uh, one of the first things I'll say is that just like when you buy any bike, there is an enormous temptation to immediately go out and buy like all the accessories now. And if you look at videos online for these bikes, people go absolutely bonkers. And for me, you know, there is obviously a temptation. You're like, oh, that's cool. I want that. Oh, I want that too. But you know, that's kind of what my Himalayan's for. My Himalayan is my adventure bike. It's my touring bike. It's the bike I'm going to take on long distances. For right now, anyway, this bike is meant for around town and just having fun in the woods. So I don't see a need to get thousands of dollars of accessories for it. Uh, as tempting as it can be, you know, you start surfing on those pages and, and you're like, ooh, that would be a cool little accessory. Oh, that would be a cool accessory. So um, I can tell you that I have very few plans to add um, really much at all to this. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, other than the milk crate, which you can see here, which I installed just for running groceries, you know, the, the, the one, one of the downsides of this bike, and I'll be completely honest with you guys, coming from a scooter is I lost all that under seat storage, which was nice. Now, yeah, there's a big rack on the back, but there's no storage. So um, I do have a bag. It's like a um, zippable sort of uh, rear bag that you can, I can strap down. That's nice. But uh, right now I've got the milk crate on here and I've got to, I've got it just bolted through the bottom right onto the frame. There's bolt holes and I just put an old license plate in there and drilled and kind of bolted it to the license plate to hold it down. And it's nice and steady. Um, and that's it. And what's cool about this milk crate too uh, is it's collapsible and it seals up nice. I mean, that's that's fantastic, right? So that's uh, that's the introduction to uh, to Louise. I'm having a blast. Um, I will go through some of the few small mod modifications I have made to the bike because I have made a few. You know, I've I've adjusted the kick start lever a little bit. I've adjusted the clutch lever a little bit or the, the, the gear shifter a little bit. Um, I did put a battery tender uh, plug on it and I did put a, a power supply up on the front just because if I ever want to, you know, charge my phone while I'm riding around on it or whatever. But that's basically it. That's all I've done. That in the milk crate. I did buy a few extra tools for the toolbox because the, the toolbox that comes with this bike is literally just a screwdriver. <laughs> so I wanted to have at least enough tools to be able to do some minor maintenance on it. Um, and so I did I did buy a really small tool kit that fits in the toolbox. So I'll I'll get into all that stuff later. But I really just wanted to take the time in this video to just introduce you to the new bike and tell you all how excited I am that I that I was able to get one. And, you know, I, obviously I'm not gonna be ripping it up Schnabel Hill Road on this thing, but I, I have been pleasantly surprised with how this thing performs. Uh, it really does just climb anything. Uh, I've gone on some crazy stuff already on it and it's just, bloop, just goes right up. So, uh, and it's so light, it's so nimble that anytime I hit sand or anything loose, all I gotta do is put a foot down and just boop. And, and it, it's, I don't worry about it tipping over. Um, it's just, it's so nice. That's it, that's all I'm gonna tell you so far. I will certainly start compiling a list of notes as I spend more time with it. Um, but for now, I am going to go and enjoy this beautiful sunset in the pines here and uh, have some fun on these trails. So take care, be safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
All right, well, we are out here right behind my house, the same place that I came the day after I bought my Himalayan. And I'm here now with the new Trail 125. And uh, I'm very excited about this little bike. Um, literally trailered it home, got home about 15 minutes ago. Um, yeah, rolled it down the trailer, uh, brought it in the garage, checked it just to make sure everything looked good and sprayed a little uh, lube on the chain and we are going to get some inaugural footage here. And I'm very excited about this. I mean, the bike, I can still smell the bike, like the oils and it's just, it's just so new. So um, I'm gonna turn it on and you're gonna see that there's quite literally uh, six miles on the odometer, six. <laughs> and uh, I am definitely still getting used to this um, semi-automatic transmission. I keep reaching for the clutch and it's not there, but so be it. Here we go. <laughs> 